Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 1. It is episode 13 today and today we're going to be doing a bunch of different stuff in the world, helping out Zloy with a couple of redstone shenanigans and then also working on a massive squid farm as well. So we kind of have a lot of projects in front of us for today's episode, hopefully you guys do enjoy. Now, I haven't posted an episode in about a week, but we do a ton of live streaming, so we've actually still been getting a bunch of work done on the world. So as you can see, the entire spruce wall going all the way around the village is now completely done. We might also squeeze in a little bit of work on this village today if we have time. But yeah, it is looking pretty good. We still have a lot more to do in this village, but it is certainly coming along very nicely. And once we get this wall done, we can start working on building up more buildings and actually getting some proper inhabitants in our village. I have a really fun idea for who's actually gonna be living in the village. It's not gonna be villagers. If you have any guesses, maybe leave a comment down below. So I just did a little bit of building of this desert wall and it's pretty much completely done now, going all the way from the end of that spruce wall all the way around the village to that other gate over there. And if we get into the air, it actually looks pretty all right. I will say so myself. Very nice wall design from the Mythical Sausage. And the only thing that we really need to do is put a little bit of decorating and detailing on the outside. But honestly, I am not worried about this at all, except the fact that you can just like hop right over that. Well, okay, I should probably fix that. <laughs> um, but yes, if you, in case you're wondering why I have a seven levels, that is because we died. That is the first time I've actually ever properly died on the server besides the ender dragon i died to the ender dragon 25 times but this was my first like proper real death not in the end dimension which i think is pretty good but the thing about that death is that my internet went out so i've been having a lot of internet issues which is just the worst most annoying thing in the entire world if you have internet issues you feel my pain it's just honestly terrible so basically what happened is I lost internet connection, the game didn't realize that, so I was technically still in the game for who knows how long, but it was long enough for like five of these stupid zombie butts to come up and gang up on me, and they killed me. And of course, being in a desert, I was collecting some dead bushes, I kind of exploded right onto a cactus, and just died and lost all my items, so that was pretty wonderful. And uh, I only lost two things from that though, the two most valuable things, subjectively the two most valuable things, the elytra and the booties. So yeah, not very great. <laughs> Luckily we do have backups, but we're going to need to rename these things. And it's just kind of sad because like you can't prepare for that kind of thing. And I usually try to keep my armor for the entirety of the world. So we just lost that due to a cactus. So here we are down at the double spawner and we're just going to go ahead and rename some gear from the comment section more or less. So we need to name our four main tools and then of course rename our elytra and our booties as well. So let's get into it. The elytra is of course going to be renamed to Pegasus number two. Hopefully this is the final Pegasus we ever need to make. The boots are getting renamed to Achilles heel number two as well. And I think these things actually have all the enchantments we need. I'll probably throw another thorns on there just so they're actually level three because I like having perfect things. Tycraft on Discord suggested that we name a tool Undermined and I feel like the shovel is the perfect option for that. So there we go, brand new shovel. We're gonna name one of our Silk Touch pickaxes Pickle because you know, why not? And oh no, I don't have enough levels for this. No, this is gonna take longer than I thought. I have three levels, oh come on now. I thought this was supposed to be quick and easy. Oh, well actually I guess this is quick and easy. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, let's rename that thing Pickle then, shall we? Jeez. Noonicorn on Discord suggested that I pick my own names, so I think that's a wonderful name for our pickaxe, and there we go. Oh, wait a second. Hmm. Nah, I think it's fine. More levels have been acquired, and we can finally rename our god axe to Chopsticks. This is kind of like my long time, just a favorite name for an axe because you're chopping sticks, and it just, it just makes sense. It's a pun. Jeez, it's innocent. Leave me alone, but it is kind of expensive. Uh, but with that one, we have successfully renamed all of our tools, at least the main ones that we always use. We, of course, have our chest plate and bow, 
two backup pickaxes and a riptide trident that all need renaming as well so if you guys got any name suggestions for those let me know if a comment down below and you might get it named after you in one of these episodes while we're down here as some of you guys know we have this mysterious cave llama that spawned down here we named him mr spitstone he's running around like a maniac and uh, we put the black carpet on him to try and make him look like a bandit it's kind of hard to see him but he doesn't quite look like a bandit. Some of you guys told me that the gray carpets are the one that do that. So we actually had another llama spawn down in these caves. And uh, do we have to tame him first? Oh, I guess I haven't tamed him. I just kind of got him in this area. There we go. So now if we open him up, we should be able to put either the light gray carpet on him, which doesn't really look like a bandit. Those of you who said light gray, you, you don't know anything about llama carpets, but to be fair, neither do I. Oh, and there we go. It's the actual proper gray one. There we go. Now he's got the goggles. This is awesome. So this is, of course, Mr. Spitstone, the mastermind criminal. And this is the actual little, like, goon that does all the dirty work. Very, very nice. I like these random cave llamas. What can I say? Hold on a second. This guy was a different color before. He was cream colored. And then as soon as I actually got on him to try and tame him, he turned into a white llama. What? What is up with this game sometimes? Did you guys notice that? I had to actually go back and rewatch the video. Because I was like, hold on, something's not right here. <laughs> what is up with this game? Can you not, like, have different colored llamas that are tamed? That is so strange. He was cream colored. I got on top of him and now he's white. Like, I don't understand. Maybe he's turning albino from being in these caves. I don't understand it. So I was just looking around for another llama to test my hypothesis of never being able to tame a cream colored one. And I remembered that there's actually a broken raid happening here. Oh, here's a llama, but that's a trading llama, probably different. Anyway, dang it, stupid berry bushes. <sighs> Jeez. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I kind of want to be a good Samaritan and maybe fix this raid. So no one on the server actually really knows how to fix these, but it's actually really simple. All you need to do is remove all of the beds from the village that the raid is happening in. And in case you're not aware of how these raids can break, basically you can get one guy stuck underground forever. And then of course you'll basically never find them. They don't despawn of course, and then nothing happens to him. Or if a raider goes to the nether, then they can break as well. Uh, so here's a bed. Wonderful. Stay on your bed, Blue Jay. Sorry about that. I'll put it back later. So I just need to find all the beds, remove them, and then we should get the bad omen effect. And this is the only other bed that I can find in this village. And apparently that is not it. This is actually kind of disturbing. I mean, so many cats in this amount of square footage is, is just like, it's inhumane. It's not sanitary. But I'll take the bed. Thank you very much. Why that still hasn't given me bad omen? Jeez, there are- oh my god, there's more cats down here. How did I not notice them? <laughs> uh, oh god, it, it's Liara's house. No wonder. And there's a creeper literally right there. You're telling me that the house with 50,000 cats in it just got blown up by a creeper? Liara, seriously? You didn't put a single cat outside? Oh my god. Uh, if this was a live stream, I would say we should get some face palms in the chat because I just completely nuked at the front of the cat house. <laughs> All right, so in case you thought the cats was bad, you haven't seen nothing till you've gone downstairs. Yeah, sure, chickens, that's not a big deal. There's literal turtles down here. Oh my god. Uh, is there any dark oak? I need some dark oak to repair this place. <laughs> Aha, I found a bed. Yoink. We'll bring back later. <laughs> Aha, I fixed the raid. A raid has expired. I did not know that that was a message. What? I discovered a new thing. Did you guys know that was a thing? I just rung one of these bells over here because uh, I thought that that would maybe do something. I was just about to remove these things. And why can I not ring this one? That, that's stupid. Why can I not ring you? You're, you're not a functional bell. Okay, just for decoration. It's a chisel and bits bell. Uh, so yes, finally, I fixed the raid. I believe that's completely fixed. So now we can fly around at this area and it actually expired. So weird. I didn't know that that was a thing. That's honestly awesome. They should make them way easier to expire because then we won't have this issue. I believe it was the light blue bed that he had. And then Liara had this lime one and then this one was up on top of the hill. Sweet. So that wasn't too terrible to actually fix. Oh, and one more random thing is that this little village over here is actually part of the village city, which is one of the few community building districts that we have on the server. So this village city is going to become a really big proper thing. We have actually a nice big building over here that Zloy's built kind of as like a 
service tavern place you can come over here and get yourself a job we got the warehouse restoring all the different building materials and then not sure what's up with the village but it's absolutely magnificent and i love it so yeah this thing is doing pretty good once we finish up our own village we might come over here and lend our building expertise because you know, we're basically doing the same thing, but this one is going to be on a much, much bigger scale. So I believe I've gotten my fill of random bits and bobs for today's episode. I've forgotten about my incident with the cactus, but that does not mean that I still like cactuses. They are so useless on this platform. Anyway, we're going to move on to our proper projects for today, which is going to be helping out Zloy with his redstone mess of projects. And he is actually moved. He is no longer our neighbor, the Village of the Undead over here is uh it's no longer inhabited by Azloy. he's moved several hundred blocks in this direction over here that was like his starter base and now he's moved into his proper base area and if you're not aware everyone on the server is basing in like basically a giant circle around the central area of the map which is Atlantis so he has moved over to this area over here and has a lot of stuff going on <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Is he still stuck? Is he still stuck? Oh, it's running the farm with him in there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this. Hold on, please don't let him out. So I just did a bunch of work the other night with Zloy, helping him set up this mess of redstone right here. And the thing about this redstone mess is that basically what it's doing is it's feeding cactus and other basically useless crops into some composters, getting the bone meal out of that, and then shoving that into a sugarcane farm, which we can see in the back here. Really scared of creepers. Uh, but yeah, there is a sugarcane farm in that area. It's taking the sugarcane from there and putting that into a chest. Once it has enough sugarcane, it then sends all the bone meal from the cacti into a bamboo. Now, the idea with that is to send the bamboo into a chest and then into a super smelter. Uh, hopefully, all of that made sense. It took me like two hours to figure out what exactly he wanted. I think I made it somewhat functional. I don't really know. A lot of this has changed since I left, so apparently he wasn't very happy with it. Meh, 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 meh. Let's hop into a call with him and actually check out what he's done since then, because this entire thing is completely new to me. It is more or less done. We have one, two, three, one, two, three, six levels of it. Each level has, I don't actually remember, I'm pretty sure eight twice, so 16. Um, Hi. Yeah, Silent is also here. Yes. <laughs> 16 pumpkin stems on it. So 16 pistons, 16 uh, uh, what's it called? repeaters, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I wanted to measure the efficiency of it somehow, but everything I tried was kind of resulted in very silly results. And also I was way too bored to actually sit down in FK. So I instead just kept building more and more layers. Which is why I grabbed Silent Whisperer and was hoping that he will make sense of this uh, stupid thing. Does this even work? How are you liking it, Silent? <laughs> <laughs> Does it work? <laughs> um, this particular level, actually not quite. Okay. Um, basically, allow me to explain. The goal of this farm was to save me some hoppers. I see. Well, I think you accomplished that. So remember the previous design that you saw? Mm -hmm. So instead of placing a hopper, this is what we do. Oh. I mean, that's kind of convenient. Incredibly so. I'm super proud of this thing, so uh, please don't break my heart too much. <laughs> 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 no promises. Because I know this one is stupid, but it's so delightfully stupid. I mean, I'm just wondering, like, oh, okay, never mind, there's a piece of redstone. I was wondering how you're powering the pistons, but I didn't see the redstone. Never mind. I mean, I guess it technically works, but... Trust me, it also just works. Yes. So, the thing about uh, melons and pumpkins is, is that they like to grow west, so... I mean... I'm not rebuilding yeah. this entire thing... <laughs> facing west also i have no idea which direction west is yeah neither do i but i'm just saying that's a thing but i mean otherwise i mean eh, it's not very space efficient but i suppose it'll work i mean again look out of hoppers and space which one do you think i have plenty of probably hoppers you're the one person on the server that actually sells iron like come on now uh trick question both oh fair enough <laughs> 
Yeah. Open the pumpkin chest down here. Do you actually have pumpkins? No, but oh. I do have hoppers. You have a you lot of hoppers, my god. Stacks of them. <laughs> can I have a stack of these? Just like this one Again, I was... You can have all five stacks of them. <laughs> I use I use a lot of hoppers. <laughs> you probably will have a better use for them than I do. I'm literally about to build a squid farm with a whole bunch of hoppers. This is beautiful. Thank you. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's incredibly convenient for my causes because I'm pretty sure I will get more mileage out of that squid farm <laughs> than you ever will. Uh, probably. Yeah, I'll bring over whichever ones I don't use. This is beautiful. This is like three Christmas worth worth of hoppers right here. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Five, ten, fifteen. Just hurry it up and figure out how to make a reliable iron farm already. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer you suffering with the mining of iron. Uh, it's not much of a suffer, it's more of a bore. Oh, I see the sugarcane farm is working. Oh, that... Of course it is. I, I fed like a ton of bone meal into it. Very nice. <laughs> uh, also, I'll be hooking up, of course, the, the pumpkins to the... to the rightful uh, composter a tiny bit later, and I'll be making some sort of a melon farm to boot, but you can probably guess. Which direction is west, by the way? Um, which which way does the sun rise? Um, is that east? I think that I think it's setting right now, so that would be west. I think you actually built this yeah. correctly, at least half of it. This thing looks really good. Yeah, and now I need to build another one, approximately the same the same size, just to house this stupid monstrosity. Well, that's what you get for building out of birch. I mean, do you really think there is a material or out of which I could have built it and had it look somewhat alright? Stone bricks. Nah, okay, fair point. So yeah, this thing is just a really, really big pumpkin farm. It doesn't have that many pumpkin plants in it. However, it is kind of cool. I do think that this is a fun idea simply because he is using the waterlogged repeaters, which I've never seen anyone use in a build, especially a farm like this, and they're actually useful. This is like a bedrock exclusive. So as you can see, this, uh... Okay, you know what? Maybe it doesn't work that well. I, I was about to be like, yeah, this thing is amazing. I love it. But I mean, does it not work? Did he test this? Oh, come on. Tell me you tested this, Loy. Okay, I guess it does technically. I mean... You know what? I, I thought this was a really cool build, but... <laughs> okay, maybe to be fair, maybe this upper layer isn't done. Can we go down here? Is this one gonna be any better? Okay, this one looks like it's working slightly better. Um, you know, I'm just gonna leave it. I would assume that he's not completely done building it. So yeah, I do like the idea. It's a fun concept and it uses waterlogged repeaters as well. So as you saw in that little meetup of Zloy, he just gave us about five stacks of hoppers, which is absolutely perfect for the main thing that I wanted to do today, which I guess is gonna be about 20 minutes into the video. Not typically how things work, but hey, you know what? We're doing things different. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I wanna set up a squid farm and we've actually already set up the squid farm because it's a very grindy, slow, tedious project and I've done a tutorial for it but the storage system is going to be the fun part, so that's what we actually are going to be setting up at the end of today's episode. So in this area, we have a tiny little ocean, and I mean absolutely tiny, and it is inside of this area right here. So I recently made a, you know, squid farm tutorial. Basically, you just put down a whole ton of magma blocks with water above it. Stuff spawns in the water, dies and suffocates in the bubble columns and on the magma blocks. And then we have a ton, literal ton of hopper mine carts and rail lines going underneath it. If you'd like to see the ocean, well, then you are in luck because there is actually the ocean right underneath here. And as you can see, we even got ourselves a little bit of ruins, a very inconvenient spot to build a house don't know why they did that in the first place, but yeah, they did. And they regret it, because now they're all dead. If you're not aware, squids, turtles, and dolphins, they all share the same mob cap of exactly four, and that mob cap spans over the course of like, you know, 60 blocks in every direction, so we have to make sure that there's no turtles or dolphins within 60 blocks of this farm if we actually want to get ourselves a bunch of squid. But this thing is not only a squid farm, it is also a fantastic fish farm as well. 
and a fish drop bones on the bedrock edition. So this is actually one of the best sources of bones on the entire platform, way better than any form of actual mob farm. I mean, look at this. We got stack upon stack upon stack of these things, and this thing has not run for that long at all, only about an hour or so. So currently we only have the hopper minecarts in place and all of these things basically just go into their own singular little chest here. So what we need to do is we need to combine all of these offloaders into an automated dropper system which will then go into these water ice streams. We also need to expand this to get the one lonely unloader that is over there as well. And then we need to send all of those water streams into one main point which is going to be this right here. And then we will send that up to the upper platform where we have our nether portal. If I can fly up there then we'll actually be able to see what we're doing from up here. So this is of course going to be how we access the farm. I don't want to ever have to go down there, like ever. So we're going to have to set up an on and off switch for all of our unloaders too. That won't be a big deal. And then I want to have a significantly sized stylish storage system up here at the top. And that will be looking pretty good. We're going to need a lot of storage for all of the little fishies. And then we're going to need a ton of storage for the bones too. Oh wow, this is actually the first time I've ever actually seen it happen but my hopper minecarts just duplicated that's literally the first time in four years of playing minecraft that i've seen them ever duplicate wow first time for everything that's pretty awesome that's one of the things i love about this game every single day you play you see something new and weird or you learn something now where is that minecart there you are. Goodbye. Thanks for the hopper. Those are actually fairly valuable. So with that little oddity out of the way, we can actually move on to building all of our auto dropper circuits to get the items from these chests up into that water stream. And then from there, we'll need to get it into a proper storage system. So if you're not aware of how to build an auto dropper circuit, these things have been around for absolutely ages and they are extremely simple to set up. Just something like this is a very basic straightforward auto dropper not super quick not super slow it just works and it is reliable so i'm going to set up basically nine of those for our minecart unloaders and then we should be good to go today is not my day with creepers i'm telling you so for this build we're actually going to be doing something that i don't do that often and that is build with color that is something that uh I decided to do so bone blocks because we get so many of that from this farm and then also the red uh, you know clay because why not I decided that hey I got a few bits of that we may as well put it to use and this seems like a good build red and white just usually goes together pretty well but as you can see I got the chest layout I guess this is actually gonna pre a pretty simple system uh, probably just a little bit of a rin splitter going to the either side so that we evenly distribute items to both sides and then just basic item filters on the back luckily we got these five stacks of hoppers from zloy so this shouldn't be too big of a deal to actually throw together and i think i'm just going to use the basic impulse sv item sorter i do have my own item sorter design that is more reliable for bedrock edition however I just, I, I can't be bothered. I know how to build this one easier. <laughs> so some stuff has been done. I went ahead and made this little walkway out to the AFK spot a little bit more fancy. And I also decorated the entire inside of our storage room. It now looks entirely like a lighthouse, except this. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be, but it's there and I'm not really gonna change it now. So it's what we got to work with. And I also expanded this bubble column to be too wide, just for symmetry sake. And I'm pretty sure because of that, all of the items are going to the right side. Like, you can see all those things. They just went to the right. Um, yeah, might have to change that up a little bit so it actually splits them evenly. Although, that being said, that hopper is facing that way. So maybe it's catching some of the things. I honestly don't know. But we do have all the filters set up for our cod, salmon, bones, ink sacks, and then just random leftover items. And it is working pretty well so far. All the filters are actually still filling up at the moment, so we probably won't see any ink sacks in there. Dang it, I just want to open the thing. Yeah, we got 26 in there, and we got a few on this other side as well. So the thing is indeed working. I will probably go AFK over here overnight just to see if we can get ourselves some pretty decent rates from this thing. But the final thing that we need to do is actually install the on and off switch, which I'm going to put right inside of this area. Probably just like two levers for symmetry's sake. Well, apparently this is a thing. Wasn't aware this was a thing. This is a thing. It's kind of creepy. 
but I kind of love it as well. All right, so super terrible looking on and off switch is now installed and man, that looks terrible. I'm kind of regretting having a glass platform, but this kind of has to be glass. And dang it, there's another turtle over there. Die turtles, you're not allowed over here. I'm sorry, anywhere else, not within 64 blocks of this farm, please. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and unflick that lever. We should see, yeah, all the hopper minecarts actually got launched. Wonderful. So this thing is indeed working. So this thing is actually completely done now. And in case you're wondering why we chose this spot right here, it's because it's a nice isolated ocean area. Uh, pretty far from other oceans we're just gonna have to do a little bit more spawn proofing to actually prevent you know turtles and dolphins and squids from spawning within 64 blocks of this farm but we'll probably end up doing that on live streams or maybe in a little bit of a time lapse in a future episode so i'm gonna go ahead and do a full night of afk over here at the farm hopefully no turtles spawn and break the rates of this thing but either way we're gonna get so many drops from it I do hope that you guys did enjoy today's episode of Truly Bedrock. If you did, then do please leave a like. It helps out the video and the channel significantly. And if you did enjoy the episode, maybe consider sharing it around with others as well so that they can enjoy all the derps and the shenanigans too. But I will see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. And then there was silence.